In this episode of Reset EDU, we will talk to Bruce Reicher, who you may remember from my ISTE 2019 vlog episode. He's going to share his story about setting up and running a daily news show with students. Um, hi, I'm uh, Bruce Reicher. I'm a technology teacher in New Jersey. I've been teaching for over 20 years, and I've been lucky enough the past 12 years to teach computer applications, coding, and also TV production. And I'm really proud that my kids do a live morning show every single day of, uh, of the whole year. And it's cool that all the eighth grade kids get to participate in the show. Let's talk about that journey that you went through when you were creating this class kind of from the ground up. Number one, empathy. So thinking about your users. So as a teacher, you're thinking about your students and how they would use the class. And then um, kind of like for ideating and defining is kind of like that whole like what is the problem like what is your main goal and then kind of brainstorming and thinking big like if money were no object what would i do and then i think there is a secondary step that kind of scales back like okay but i don't have all this money so what can i do now and then hopefully build things up or change things over time so i just threw a lot at you kind of tell us your story <laughs> No, I, I, to I totally get it. My story is I have been at a previous school where we did, you know, a live um, TV show. Then I switched to um, the school where I am now and I walk in and they had equipment in there that was legacy equipment from 12 years ago to the point where the cameras took like VHS tapes. So we're talking about very old legacy equipment and that school had the equipment for six or seven years and they used it for some little classes, but they didn't have a class just on TV production. And it's funny you said almost like the Google 10 times think big thing yeah. because the principal at the time, which was awesome, this room was built where the equipment was in there and she's like, forget about this equipment, forget about anything. Like, let's start just from square one of like, where is this going to be? It was yeah. at the end of the hallway in on the end of like a sixth grade wing of the school. So, you know, should we break down the wall to the other classroom? Should we move it to the library? Should we, you know, move it to all these different places? And this principal was really good at almost the question that you asked of just like, yeah. not if you could have anything, but like, you know, what's kind of your vision for it of like the location of where it's going to be. And as the practical person who had done it before for four years, I was like, the lo location's fine in that it was all legacy equipment to begin with. And I found from my past experience that once you start unplugging and moving equipment, especially if it's not even new, yeah. um, you, I don't know how much success you're going to have when you, as careful as custodians could be, mm -hmm. when you move it to another part of the building and then replug everything back in. So I kind of wanted to stay in that little area. And I thought we have one classroom dedicated just to the TV studio. Okay. So I'm lucky enough in my school, there's another computer lab, which is the classroom, which isn't even connected, you know, to the TV studio. So we did start in the beginning of like, what was your big idea of where it would be? Mm -hmm. And we almost like cut into the classroom next to it. Okay. to like make a whole nother classroom, the control room and the computer lab. But they were worried about, um, and it was a good thought, in the future, if the numbers increased in the school, well, what if they needed that classroom later on? And it, it came to be that luckily enough in my school, they have a strong education foundation where you can apply for internal grants. Okay. And we were granted a lot of money in the beginning to finish setting up this room. Okay. And the biggest thing that we actually set up and the biggest like problem if they were to broadcast from that room was mm -hmm. a whole control room built it was open room and then right next to it was the studio and in my own eyes the first thing that needed to be done was to build some type of temporary wall to separate the control room from the studio okay. so kids walk in the control room and the microphones in the studio wouldn't pick them up yeah so it sounds like you started off with the legacy equipment and yes. then the first big thing you bought was the wall Definitely. The first, okay. I was there, this is in 2007. Okay. Um, I'm only in the school for, you know, six weeks, seven weeks. And luckily enough, it was a $20,000 grant mm -hmm. from the Education Foundation. Yeah. And you talk about this wall, the wall was 15 out of the 20,000. So if I wanted to start a news program at my school and I do not have a room full of legacy equipment, what would you recommend? Like, how do I start? What are the what are the baby steps? I mean, I think the easiest way to start is if a school is one-to-one -one Chromebooks or mm -hmm. if they're one-to-one -one 
iPads or even if they're not one to one, like I would create a set in your classroom and get a green screen for the background and then the set could be whatever you would like it to be. Okay. And then um depending on the equipment that you have, if you're using maybe We Video for Chromebooks, there's another product called Padcaster for mm-hmm. iPads. Mm-hmm. That with Padcaster, it's like a virtual studio. Yeah. That you create the studio and the titles like as you're taping. Um, but the point is, I would like get a table in your classroom, like start small of these are kids who are going to introduce stories about our school. And then as part of your class, possibly have kids go out and do a one minute story on mm-hmm. whatever is happening in the school okay. and then kind of do the show like live to tape. Like the kids behind the announcer desk might be live saying, you know, welcome to our morning news show. You know, here's an announcement or two. And now let's go learn about the drama club. So should I go out and buy cameras? Should I buy lights? Should I buy microphones? What what should I do? Right. I think the first thing to do for anyone mm-hmm. is kind of like to take stock and inventory of what you have mm-hmm. and use the equipment that you have and then go build off of that. I'm thinking about when you said like go out and, and film, you know, the drama club and you make a one minute thing. Do your students have cameras that they use or are they just bring in their Chromebook around? No, they, I mean, I'm like a pretty good shopper. I'm pretty picky. I'm still in yeah. like a middle school setting that we don't have like professional cameras for shooting the features. Mm-hmm. I'm like a big fan of the Canon. I think it's called RF 800 camera. Okay. It's like a 200 to $250 camera. Mm-hmm. It takes an SD card as the film. Okay. And you can actually buy like a $10, $15 microphone. That the one thing that the camera has, which is important, is a lot of camcorders do not record good audio. Yeah. And many times the audio is overlooked because you're making a video. Yeah. But if yeah. you think of things you watch like on YouTube, mm-hmm. if, if the audio is not good, you're not going to stay there. Yeah. So the reason why I like these cameras is it actually has a place to plug in an external microphone. Okay. So the audio yeah. is pretty good. Okay. And I think it's like a $15 microphone, mm-hmm. $200 to $250 camera. And I think we use Sony tripods that were like $30. So. Okay. You know, the whole package of those is maybe, you know, under $300. Hmm. I pretty much have two or three sets of those. I've built them up over time. But Hmm. when you're starting in the beginning, maybe, you know, two sets of a camera, an SD card, microphone, and a tripod. And then you're set at least to, you know, send kids out to go, you know, to go videotape. It sounds like $300 is something that's doable for, like, writing a grant or even a donor's choose or even going depending on your PTA going to them and they saying eh three hundred dollars might be a a doable thing you know depending on where you're at so I mean that actually it sounds reasonable (laughs) and hopefully even in like regular budget you know if you get a budget or if you don't you know it's something that you can go um ask for and I kind of think in the beginning if I was like you know, starting with nothing, yeah. I would even just get one, like get one camera, one SD card, microphone, tripod, go out. The kids always go out in groups of two or three anyway. They're not going out by themselves. Okay. And um, have them go out and, you know, start videotaping. And now the concern is, right, if you have a class of 20, mm-hmm. and one camera to go out, then in the time being, there's many other steps of storyboarding, planning out the story, uh, writing voiceovers for the beginning of the story. Okay. You know, there could be other things that the other students could be planning and doing. Mm-hmm. And many times I only have two or three camera sets that are out okay. while the other groups are editing or planning. And almost like the writing process, they're doing yeah. the of like a video process of telling the story. And the mm-hmm. better plan they have, the better their video will come out. Looking back on your, like, let's take a moment to reflect. <laughs> Looking okay. back, looking back on your journey, what would you have done differently? Are there any mistakes or or just time, energy, money wasters? That something? Do you regret anything? Not real. I mean, we were pretty systematic, and because I had done it before, and after that first big grant, mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of knew every year that I could apply for like a partial grant, and I kind of had it planned out like first thing I need to do is everything we had was analog okay one piece at a time start upgrading everything to digital Mm -hmm. we only had two like portable headsets like to do the actual tv show called like 
Porticon with the big square thing and you plug in the headsets and stuff okay. and right and the microphone and we only had two of them yep. and um i waited for a long time to update them to a wireless system okay and i updated it to almost like a i had this today too with kids i do explain what a cordless phone is because they didn't know the system that i have works like a cordless phone like a base yeah and then the eight headsets all go to that one base yeah because a lot of them don't have telephones in their houses That's anymore crazy yeah 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 but that changed the show. It's not necessarily a regret, but that really bumped up the show that now myself, the other teacher, six other students were all on headsets. Okay. And that really like, bumped up the learning that, you know, live during the show every day, there are things that are taught and said to the kids and throughout doing the live show. Yeah. And that communication was never there because I wanted to update the switcher first and then That's other fair. pieces. Maybe if I did it again, yeah, honestly, I might do the headsets first. The rooms are right next to each other, but yeah. you literally have to run back and forth. Yeah. So that's a regret that I have now that I think about it. I would have done the headsets first. Well, I'm always there and make you think badly about yourself. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Good. I'm good for that. Um, good good self esteem. <laughs> you, you talk about things building and like equipment. Yes. For the first 11 years, we did not have equipment that we could do live green screen. Mm -hmm. And last year was the first year that we actually have weather and sports. Uh, and now it could be a possible traffic report. Yes. It could be like traf traffic on Upper Saddle River Road right now is moving smoothly. That's what, yes, yes. Or even traffic in the hallways. What if you did, what if you did that? The main hallway is really congested. Use the east stairs, you know, like that would just be really funny. No traffic in the hallway and set up a live camera so that's the feed going to the green screen. There you go. <laughs> Great hallway is looking pretty congested right now. Maybe go around and your reporter could get run over. Like, oh. well, I think we have lots and lots of stuff to think about and so many good ideas. Tell us where people can find you if they're interested in learning more um, or have questions or or I don't know ideas for more green screen for you. All right. <laughs> so the best way for people to find me is on Twitter, um, at B Reicher, B R E I C H E R. And then the other thing that I've been working hard on in the summer is going around presenting to different places. I've kind of like fallen in love with like Wakelet because now I have all my resources on Wakelet and whatever place I'm going to present, I could just go into my Wakelet page, which is wakelet.com slash the at symbol. Reicher, R-E-I-C-H-E-R. Okay. And that pulls up all of my resources. So um, that's my Wakelet page and Twitter. And really, those are like the two main places where where I'm doing like a lot of my work at this point. Definitely have like caught the wave with it. Like in the beginning, I didn't get Wakelet. Like I already have collections of things. Like mm -hmm. why do I need another one? Um, but now I see how easy it is to use. And Yeah. Be sure to subscribe to the Reset EDU channel for the latest project updates and episodes. If you're interested in a reset for your own classroom, be sure to fill out the form at bit.ly forward slash reset EDU. Thank you for watching.